Uh, good evening. This is the uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, September 27, 2017 meeting of the Finance Committee. Uh, just after 7 o'clock, uh, call to order here. Our agenda tonight, uh, we don't have any transfers tonight. Uh, CFO Ed Kazanovich is going to give us a quick overview on our free cash certification. Then we'll be uh, reviewing and voting on the uh, October 24, 2017 Special Town Meeting Warrant Articles. We've got uh, some minutes and uh, then we'll adjourn. So, uh, Ed, I'm going to open this up to you first. If you can just give us something quick on our free cash and what we're using it for. Um, sure. So on September 20th, uh, we received our free cash certification for period ending June 30th. 2017 or fiscal year 2017. Um, the amount certified by DOR was for the general fund was $10,784,390. SOAR Enterprise Fund retained earnings, the equivalent of free cash, $1,368,014. And the Enterprise Golf Course, uh, $85,448. Uh, and the calculation of free cash has been provided to you. I do provide that to you uh, once that is certified. So if you have any questions relative to that, we, I can field it tonight, or I don't know if you had an opportunity to look at it. But given our certification, I also included the revised policy statement for the use of free cash. And given that there are three Warren articles totaling $675,000 being recommended, is an appropriation for free cash. I wanted to just lay out uh, once again how the policy works. So if you look at a certification of 10.7 million, last year's certified free cash was 9.385. That's a gain of 1,399,115. The policy voted by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee uh, would apply 50% of that gain, or 699,557.75, that would remain in, in free cash or undesignated fund balance. And the other 50% may be used for an appropriation that's been identified uh, as its uses under the policy. The uses that we are recommending is $150,000 for a feasibility study for the facilities of the fire and police departments. Um, there is a recommendation to appropriate $350,000 from free cash into stabilization and $175,000 from free cash into OPEP. So out of 699,000, we are recommending 675,000, so we're not using 100% of that additional 50%. Okay, good. It's a great opportunity for us. Uh, any questions on that? I have one question, if no one else does. In the event that any of these three uh, proposed articles that would use the 50% doesn't pass, gets amended, or something like that, does the town still have the opportunity to move what would be the remaining balance up to 50% to like a stabilization account? Could we make uh, an amendment just to take advantage of that 50% and if nothing else get it into stabilization instead of it falling to free cash? Well, you could use, let me put it this way, um, we approve the tax recap in December for FY18. Uh, typically, this is the last town meeting before the recap is set, but you are allowed to vote out of available funds or free cash once the tax rate is set. So, answer would be we would have an opportunity up until the next annual town meeting if a portion of that free cash should be used, or um, if for whatever reason something may fail, whether it be one of the other articles, we could always amend it on the floor and ask that more money be put into stabilization. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have to be approved by town meeting, though, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any amendment on that? Yeah. Okay. Just to be clear on that, any other questions? Okay, great. Thanks. Um, 
Next, we'll go to the uh, Warren articles themselves. Uh, I believe, in my opinion anyways, there could be uh, at least a few amendments that we would normally defer as non-cash items. I don't know if anyone else has looked through this, and um, department heads are here, and that's great, along with other visiting dignitaries. Hi, Dorian, nice to see you too. Um, but I believe we might have a couple articles just so we can get a department head if they want to not stay here, and they can move on if we have some to defer. Ed? Mr. Chairman, one comment. Yeah. The warrant that you have before you, we were just notified by legal counsel that Article 22 is no longer needed okay. because the Massachusetts State Police and the FBI have reviewed what was passed at, the, was it the Fall Town meeting? From the the annual town so meeting? it's under review. Fall Town meeting. Uh, second review of that uh, approved warrant article. Um, is leading to the removal of Article 22. Now, the Board of Selectmen have voted on the articles as it is before you tonight. I suggest that we keep it consistent, but numbers 22 through 25 are going to shift up one. Okay. I think someone So the action you take on Article 23 no. may appear in the new warrant that goes on to meeting is Article 22. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll address those when we get them in terms of yeah. making sure we have the correct numbers. Uh, anyone else in terms of changes to what's going on? Deferrals um, on any other articles? I have a couple of suggestions on this, but if anyone else says. Yeah, can we just uh, can we accept yeah. a motion on a deferral on Article, Article 20, the first one? Article 20 for deferral. Um, Let's see, I'll, I'll just read this very quickly. See if town meeting will vote to accept Mass General Laws Chapter 54, uh, Section 16A as follows, and any city or town which accepts this section, have the warden, clerk, or inspector, or the deputy of any such officer, if any is not present at the opening of the polls. So this is a poll-related question to our town clerk here. To me, this doesn't seem to have a monetary implication. So mm -hmm. are, are you recommending deferral on I'd this? make a motion to defer. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Okay, great. So we're deferring on Article 20. Any other articles? 21. 21. This, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. This has to do with Saturday and Sunday holidays and town clerk also, which I don't see any monetary um, discussion on this either. So I'd make a motion to defer on uh, Article 21. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Great, thank you. And on number 23, please. 23. So this is the old 23. Mm -hmm. Now the new 22, or almost new 22. Yes. Uh, if anyone was watching Monday night, I know I was. I know some people were here. Uh, this is regarding stop signs and really just a correction of language within bylaws. So uh, a motion to defer. A motion to defer Article 23. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Any others? No. What about 24? Um, that one does. That's, that, that's back to the... Uh, okay. I know our town clerk is here. Oh, yeah. you, you don't need to stay. Is that a good thing? Okay, great. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Okay. Uh, we are going to take this a little out of order. I'm uh, following the lead of our esteemed Board of Selectmen Chair, uh, just taking it by department more than in order. So uh, our first set of articles we're going to look at is the school articles, which uh, I believe are articles 3, 4, and 5. Dr. Brunell is here. Nice to see you, Dr. Brunell. You as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, so Article 3, let's see if town uh, meeting will vote to appropriate $4,374 from the general fund uh, to the Auburn School Department operating budget for fiscal year 18 to fund transportation costs for the homeless and or unanticipated transportation for other students. Uh, I believe this was an $11,000 request last year, was something like that? So this is a re now a now recurring request. 
through the chair, first, good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the Finance <coughs> Committee. Um, what we actually were paid, we actually paid out 11568 What the state reimbursed, which it came in after the end of the fiscal year, was $4,374. So that's what we're actually requesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the correction. Uh, comments or questions? Motion to, what do we do, approve? What do we recommend, approve? Motion to recommend. Second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Okay, Article 4. Uh, see if town meeting will vote to amend Article 13 for the Medicaid reimbursement amount approved on the May 2nd, 2017 town meeting from $160,000 to $185,000 to fund supplies of medical, therapeutic, and educational services for significantly disabled special needs students, as well as tuition and transportation to and from outside placements or within the districts for special needs students. Uh, a normal article. Uh, any updates in terms of the numbers? I know the number shifts around a little bit. So this actually, uh, town meeting approved the 160,000 back in May. What actually was um, the town received was almost $205,000. So we've done an analysis based on students that we currently have in place and believe that the number will probably be even higher than the 185, but we feel that's a comfortable conservative number to request. Okay, any questions? A motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. And Article 5. Uh, Steve Town Meeting will vote to accept the provisions of Chapter 40, Section 13E of the Mass General Laws to establish and appropriate or transfer money to a special ed reserve fund with the stipulation that no funds will be allocated into such account until policy is agreed upon and approved by a vote uh, by each of the following town boards, school committee, finance committee, and board of selectmen. Uh, Ed, can you give us just a, a quick background on this? Um, sure. So I, we had a couple of meetings with uh, school administration, uh, Dr. Brunel and uh, school business manager. Um, and we actually met with the chair of the finance committee, board of selectmen, in coming up with some language that would allow town meeting as well as other boards and committees voting on this, some comfort level that there's some oversight and some guidance relative to the contribution of funds into this account as well as any expenditures out of this account. There are regulations that have been put out by uh, DESE. Uh, DOR is following those guidelines. Uh, but, you know, this is a new account, and there are some areas that still are gray, or there is some uncertainty relative to uh, its use, as well as some other factors. Anyway, I know there were some concerns the last time it came before the Finance Committee as well as the Board of Selectmen. There are, were many questions that were asked. Those questions still need to be uh, answered uh, before um, well, this mechanism would allow a financial policy to be established uh, that would guide these funds uh, not only in the short term but in the long term as well. So. The, each committee would buy into those financial policies, just like the free cash policy. Uh, there would be a working group established once this article is passed by town meeting, if it should pass, that would begin to assemble some uh, criteria and some guidelines relative to its use. It would come back to you, the Board of Selectmen, and the school committee for approval uh, before any contribution is made into that account. The school committee and the school committee chair was present at that meeting as well. Right, and uh, go ahead, Kim. Um, okay, this article says to establish and appropriate or transfer. I haven't read the statute, so it allows who to make appropriations? Just town meeting? Town, well, first of all, this language has to be in there uh, as written by legal counsel. Okay. So the way I believe this works is um, an appropriation could be requested at annual town, any town meeting to fund a certain amount into this account, or it gives the school district, school committee, school administration an opportunity during the course of any fiscal year to transfer money within their budget without a vote of town meeting to 
put into this account as well. In order for it to go into this account, it will need a vote of the school committee and the board of select. Correct. It can be up to 2% of net school spending, uh, whatever that amount may be, and that is not 2% annually, that's 2% over Cumulative. or whatever that amount should be, whatever that net school spending amount should be on an annual basis. So, for example, if let's say 2% is $500,000, if they put $500,000 in this account in FY18, and that net school spending was the same the following year, they wouldn't be able to put a penny more into that account because they already hit its cap. Um, if, I, if I could add, Kim, two takeaways I had from this meeting. Number one was the, uh, actually the account would be held uh, under the town treasurer. As I remember, the second takeaway, and I know I asked a couple of times, was basically the monies that would go into this fund or could go into this fund would have already had to have been appropriated or came in from some outside source. This would not be, there would no, be no new tax revenues going in there for that specifically. Is that correct? I can't say that for the future. Um, I know for FY18 there is no recommendation for an appropriation from general fund revenues or any other funding sources up front for this account. If in fact there are leftover surplus funds within the FY18 school department budget, uh, it is my understanding that they may be considered as a funding mechanism uh, for this account. Uh, would that be correct? Correct. Yes. So I have uh, a yeah. So yes. can money come from the um, outside Arctic, outside funding sources, you know, the, um, the um, sports accounts where, where money comes in? Can money come from those accounts into this one? Or, and, and the money that is being put into this account, does it have to, it's just from, um, any budget excess, not just from special ed expenditure excess? So it would not be permissible to transfer any money from any special use fund or revolving account into this account because a revolving account is established for the activity that the money is being, uh, whether it's fee generated or through some other source. It has to be used for that activity. Any other quick okay. And we wouldn't be able to use it from free cash because quite honestly, we see this as a operating expense. Mm -hmm. So that would not qualify under the free cash policy usage. Two questions. Can it only be used for special education? Yes. And, and transportation relating to special ed, correct? So for special education or related services, if a child was out of district and required transportation, it could be used for that. But it has to have a connection to special education. And it really is, as the legislation had noted, for unanticipated or unbudgeted, really to um, have, I think, to borrow Mr. Kazanovich's word from the other evening, a backstop if something came up. But it it also could effectively, at the end of the year, reduce the overall free cash available to the whole time, to the general fund, if you're appropriating funds mm -hmm. from- Normally surplus appropriation or, or, or surplus appropriation or any remaining balance within the school department would be closed out to free cash. Right in any normal circumstance. If it were, in fact, put into this account, yes, it would reduce that amount of money. So it effectively increases the, it, does it have an effect on net school spending? Does it increase our required, because it's, a, it's, it's an additional appropriation. Well, it can uh, be used for, for if it came from an outside source, yes. If the, if the mechanism to feed this is a sweep of surplus accounts, I don't believe it would increase net school spending because the money's already been appropriated for another purpose. 
It's not an increase to the budget. They're just using whatever funds are available and left over a year end uh, to put into this account. Question? I'll send uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, okay. that's fine. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. Oh, just another question. How often does the school committee um, have any, or does the school department have any money left that closes out to free cash? Is that to me or you, Mr. Well, Kessler? I'm, I'm happy to answer in the time that I've been superintendent. None has, has okay. so in that, to free cash. So that wouldn't affect, if that continues, it wouldn't affect free cash at all then? Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? Um, just given this is kind of a new thing, uh, Dr. Burnell, final comments on this before we? So, so my final comment would be, um, you know, as the school committee, speaking on their behalf and certainly from administration, our goal is to really work as a team with the finance committee, the board of selectmen, and school committee. This is relatively new. I think it makes, and we think it makes great financial sense to do this. Um, we saw just last year that we had a spike in unanticipated special education costs. So I think this could actually give more stability in long-term, long-range planning. So I think it makes sense. Um, I, I definitely agree with that. And that does address some of our concerns that we have normally with the school budget anyways. Uh, do we have a motion on this? Motion to recommend. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Kim. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Bernal. I believe that's the last article? It is. Thank All you. Right. Have, have a, great a nice night. evening. Thanks. Okay, so that takes care of school-related. Um, the next, uh, let's take care of uh, our police and fire. Uh, get the chiefs and their guys back to where they want to be, which is not here, I'm sure. So our next uh, article, and I'm putting you guys collectively together. I know this kind of intermingled uh, article. So we will go to article 12. And this is sponsored by the fire chief. See the town meeting will vote to appropriate $35,850 from general fund revenues for the purchase of a personal protective turnout gear for the fire rescue department. Uh, I'll remind the board, and, and I know I had forgotten because I was away, we had already approved what was the first half of this total purchase back, I think it was a special town meeting at the end of March that I had to miss. I know I had to reach out to Ed to confirm that. So this was actually an expected article from uh, the fire chief. Chief Coleman? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, the rest of the committee. Uh, yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. This is um, phase two of a two-part project. Uh, we purchased the first half of the second set of turnout gear at the special town meeting in March. Uh, this money would appropriate the remaining 17 sets of gear needed uh, for the department. Okay, any comments, questions, Kevin? Hey, what's, the, what's the average life expectancy for a set of turnout gear? Uh, Ten years, sir. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? Motion to recommend. For the second half. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? <coughs> so voted. Thank you. Okay, Article 13. Also sponsored by the Fire Chief, see if town meeting will vote to appropriate $8,382.30 from the Ambulance Reserve for appropriations uh, for purchase of ballistic protection for the Fire Rescue Department. Uh, I, I did watch you, uh, your comments on this on Monday night, Chief. It is kind of a sad state that we uh, need to go to this length on it. Uh, your comments? Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Massachusetts has put out some new response guidance for fire and EMS personnel that are responding to hostile events. Um, it calls for uh, fire and EMS training in what's called a force protection group, uh, that in the event of a hostile event, uh, where there were uh, critically injured victims still in that location, uh, that EMS personnel 
uh, would enter into a warm or a hot zone under the protection of uh, law enforcement, armed law enforcement, uh, to extract those victims. Uh, that's really the new expectation. I, uh, I shouldn't say the new expectation, but that's the expectation, uh, is that um, they would be uh, attempted to be rapidly extricated and still, instead of waiting for the event to be over. Uh, so this article would equip uh, the department with 10 uh, ballistic vests uh, of various sizes to be distributed onto the ambulance and the fire truck. Uh, and it's enough, uh, you know, with two spares uh, to equip the on-duty group. And this would provide us the same level of ballistic protection uh, that the police officers currently have. Okay. Uh, my only question, I'm going to go first this time. Um, did this guidance from the state come too late for this to be part of your normal budget process? I mean, to me, this is something that normally should be discussed within, within the budget confines. Uh, sure, that's a good question. Uh, this guidance uh, came out uh, this past April of 17. The new guidance uh, document came out. Because of um, the amount with the 10 sets that I'm looking for at the $8,000, it, it wasn't going to qualify for a capital expense uh, anyway because it was under $10,000. Uh, and because the funding source was going to be ambulance receipts, uh, I felt instead of waiting, it was appropriate to just deal with it in the fall instead of waiting an additional time period to get the equipment. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Kim, question? <clears throat> Steve, are these the same kind of vests that a police officer would use, or are they something that would go over uniforms? It goes over a uniform, yeah. The, the, the intent of this protection is not for on-duty members to be wearing this under their uniform or all the time. This, these would be pulled out during a hostile event, during some type of violent intruder incident, where we had to form one of these rescue task forces to go in to try to make an entry with police they would be donned over the uniform and secured. Like a SWAT raid vest kind of thing? Yes. I'll mm -hmm. Thank you. Chief, again, what's the, uh, the life expectancy on these vests? Five years. Okay. And are these, I, I guess, I'm, are these the, the rifle type vests that go with, are these rifle plates that are in them? Are these um, flexible Kevlar? So they're flexible Kevlar level three, uh, and the guidance was not to go to a level four with side protection and plates just because of the, you know, sort of the flexibility that the EMS would need to provide. Um, SWAT teams wear level four. Uh, the guidance uh, for fire and EMS personnel was essentially the same as a duty officer, um, you know, level three because they were under armed protection. Uh, the level four was just much heavier, as I'm sure you know, much heavier, especially with the side plates. It sort of limits movement. So the recommendation is for level three. And, and I just one, one final thing. So you said the, the guidance that has come out, is this best practice guidance or is this, uh, these are no new uh, OMS regulations uh, yeah, requiring? The, that is correct. These are not regulations. This is not law. Uh, the International Association of Fire Chiefs, the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts, and then here locally in Massachusetts, the Department of Fire Services, uh, as well as the Metropolitan Police Chiefs, the City Chiefs, uh, they came up with a, a guidance document uh, for Massachusetts in terms of how law enforcement and fire and rescue should be working together in terms of an active threat. So they were recommendations that came out of that document. And just considerations for five years is, you know, uh, will this be a future budget item as the, that five-year mark comes along to, are you going to try and stagger them so it's not as big a, a hit to replace them? And considerations for, they're not, vests are typically not very water or sweat friendly, uh, where, how these things are going to be stored and... Yeah, so they're going to be stored uh, in a bag, in a protective bag, in the vehicles. Um, so again, we, we're probably going to be a little better on the sweat factor because they're not going to be worn you know, by personnel every day, uh, but they will be in protective bags in the apparatus. Uh, and then again, it, I think in terms of what the future capital is, it's going to really depend on what the, um, where the price is in five years. Uh, you know, if, if the expense five years from now is over 10000 then it's going to need to be built into the capital, uh, but because it's an EMS-related uh, item, um, the plan would probably be the same exact that we're doing now, is that the appropriation would just come from ambulance receipts. And these for ambulance, ambulance receipts towards a medically 
for, for a medical use. Yeah, these these vests will actually have medical pouches on them for tourniquets, quick clot. It's all um, trauma related stuff that's right on the front of the EMS vest. Um, so yeah, the plan would be if it's over ten thousand in five years, it would be included in the capital. If the price, for some reason, which I highly doubt, was still under ten thousand five years from now, I would probably just recommend to handle it the same way, just an outside article under ambulance receipts. Thank you. Good all say, Kev? Yeah. Good. Motion, any other questions? Motion to recommend. Post second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Okay, Article 14. This is uh, both sponsored by the Fire Chief and Police Chief. Chief Slocus is here. Good to see you. Um, see if Town Meeting will vote to appropriate the sum of $150,000 from free cash to hire an outside consultant to study and evaluate the existing public safety buildings, including police and fire, and to make recommendations on the feasibility of renovation, expansion, or the construction of separate fire and police station buildings or a joint public safety complex or accommodation of both. Uh, Eddie had, uh, had provided some information to us on this, which I think we all would have had a chance on this. Uh, I know, Chief Coleman, you gave a kind of a brief overview. Maybe it wasn't brief uh, to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, if you'd like to give us just something brief on uh, the expectation of this study. Sure, absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Um, if you recall, when I uh, presented my budget uh, this past spring, uh, Mrs. Kavanaugh actually asked the question, uh, you know, how, how are the facilities? How, how are the facilities doing? And my answer at that time were, uh, the stations are in good shape, general maintenance is being done. Uh, you know, our staff takes a tremendous amount of pride in the building, so uh, when things break, they're fixed. Uh, but I did indicate at that time that um, in the very near future, we were going to have to have some some further, what I called at that time, real discussions on what the future of the fire station facilities uh, were going to be. Uh, and I think I even indicated at that time, and I've said publicly before, that you know we certainly don't anticipate that we're going to be shoveling the ground on any project within the next five years. But uh, e even if that was the case, if, if five years was the mark as of today, this is a conversation that, that really needs to start you know, to happen now. Um, as I was doing the research on the existing fire headquarters, that was a five-year process. From the time they started talking about it until the time they actually cut the ribbon, it was five years. So I, I think that's realistic now. One of the challenges that I think we have with these particular um, with the particular buildings is we have many more questions that are asked of us than we have answers. And I'll, you know, I'll let the police chief, uh, you know, speak to the, to the police stations, but I, I think that he's in the same boat. Um, common questions that I get all the time as I talk to citizens around the community, um, you know, what's happening to the West Street station? When, when's that station going to be replaced? What's happening with this? What's happening with that? And they're really questions that I don't know the answer to because they're, it's, it's still in some respects part of a more global plan that we really haven't talked about yet. So, but some of the answers to the questions as far as expansion, renovation, building new, we don't, we don't have the expertise, you know, to figure that out. So we're going to need some outside help to figure that out. But what I don't want to happen is I don't want to sit around for the next couple of years and, and kind of conceptually talk about what we think may happen to then eventually commission a study and then figure out that what we've been talking about for the last couple of years isn't, isn't going to work. Um, because, you know, the age of some of the buildings that we're talking about, um, I have my own opinions in terms of what architects are going to say in terms of renovation versus new and what can we do with it, what can't we do with it. Uh, but I really think we need that out outside perspective and that professional help. Uh, I know the scope of work was forwarded to the committee, um, and what you'll notice in the scope of work is uh, there's nothing in here that says we're looking to build a fire station or a police station next year. What we're talking about is really trying to narrow down, looking at what we have, wh and what can we do with all three of them and what is the possibilities with them. One of the things that I want to kind of make clear tonight because it's been asked and it's a great question, is 
the renovation work that we've been putting into headquarters over the last couple of years, what's going to happen with that. Um, that work, in my opinion, is, is not for naught, if that makes sense. Um, I, in my vision of what, what I see for future fire facilities is, I couldn't ask for better station locations than I have right now. So one of the things that you'll notice that's not in this scope of work is that we're not asking for a consultant to come in to find a site because I truly believe, at least at headquarters, that an expansion and renovation of what already hasn't been renovated is highly likely and would really be my first choice because it's a it's a great station location i really couldn't ask for anything better so if we had a, an architect come in and, and look at headquarters and the answer was yeah this has got all kinds of possibilities we could expand here we could do this we could add some base space we could add some administration and some training space but we wouldn't need to do anything with the kitchen or the bunk rooms or any of that because it, it's been touched so i think it's important to understand that we've invested you know almost a hundred thousand dollars over the last couple of years into headquarters which was much needed and much appreciated uh, but but that work we're not looking to to demo in five years in the event that that something were to move forward so I think that's Im important to note um, and I said this on Monday I said this to Miss Kavanaugh in the in the committee uh, back then um, I, th I think our buildings are in good shape. I think we, we maintain the buildings. Things have definitely gotten better. Uh, you know, with DPW, they do a great job. Um, our issues are space issues. You know, where our fire station headquarters was built in 1964, and it was built for a completely on-call department with no staff. And you fast forward, you know, 50 some odd years, we have 35 full-time employees in the building. Uh, we're doing, you know, 500 times the call volume we would do back then trucks are larger but we're still working with the same square footage we have no adequate meeting space we have no storage we have no uh, the administration spaces is, is lacking um, again the upstairs we're good what I envision in terms of some sort of a renovation at headquarters would be base space and administrative space and then turning what's currently administrative space into training space and office space. So I think that there is some good potential there. West Street, that's another story. The building was built in 1951. Um, Again, I have my opinions of what architects are going to say about that building. I think that one's going to be a little well, more Chief, difficult. We, yep. we know with West Street that was basically a combination of accommodation and finding something really that we got lucky that we had the spot there even though yeah. it's not perfect. So Absolutely. We don't even need to go into a discussion on that. Actually, I'm, I'm more concerned on hearing and making sure everyone in town hears comments from Chief Slukas mm -hmm. on the police station situation because I know right now based on your comments he's got a lot of envy of your setup that you have because he doesn't have that correct for the police chief uh, yeah. Lucas, a couple of comments thank you <clears throat> thank you mr. chairman and uh, members of the finance committee I'll be I'll be uh, brief it, it is as chief Coleman said we're pretty much on the same boat it's it's an issue of space and um, the building, when it was originally constructed, without question, should have been larger than it is. I look at um, the fire station that they're building now in Leicester. We spent two million dollars on this building. Leicester has a volunteer fire department. They don't even have a they don't even have a full time fire department, and they're spending eight point five million dollars on their new fire station. Uh, we don't have room in the records uh, section to put anything any longer. We don't have room to put. Uh, records in dead storage anymore. We don't have locker space. I mentioned the other night uh, there are several members of the department, myself included, that don't uh, don't have lockers. They don't even have a place to um, hang in a spare uniform. We've got uh, file cabinets in the kitchen area. Uh, we are um, kind of just bursting at the seams. It, the building is it's just not big enough to adequately meet the the needs of today. I don't know what the uh, expansion possibilities would be, which is why I agree with Chief Coleman. We really need to bring in an independent, outside, third-party consultant that knows what they're doing and knows what they're talking about, who can perhaps float some ideas for us to, to kick around as a group and see what works and, and what, what doesn't work. But that is our, that's our primary issue as, as well as them, is uh, a 
Great. severe lack of space. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions from the board? On this, uh, start with Kevin. Uh, just comment-wise, I, I agree, Chief. With you, we we kicked this all around and had discussions with different folks, and everybody has different opinions as to why the police department ended up where it was and why was it built small and the day, you know, too small the day they opened. But yeah. I think without having an outside study, we're just going to keep bantering this about. Uh, having somebody from the outside is key to uh, kind of looking at this from an outside perspective and, and getting it done. Those spaces, uh, you know, whether it's a public safety building for both or however it comes to be. I mean, it should be community spaces as well. I mean, I know Chief Lucas has been kind enough to let the Little League, uh, you know, use his community room, but there's points where he's got, it's overflowing with stuff in there and he can't uh, always accommodate. So, I mean, those in the future, they, they should have the room to work, but, it, you know, it's, it's it, they're community buildings as well. So hopefully, you know, whatever studies come out will point to that as, uh, you know, making it as a community aspect, um, a facility yeah. to utilize. I, I think the study is uh, the way to go to get this on track. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. Uh, Kim? Where did the number come from, the 150000 It That seems like a lot of money for a study. Sure. Um, we evaluated several uh, municipalities who launched uh, building studies for public safety. Some of them go back uh, to 2008, so we adjusted it percentage-wise because it's you know the, the, some particular studies were nine years old. We looked at several studies that were only a year or two old. Uh, they ranged anywhere from 70 to 110,000. Um, again, depended on the scope of work, but also some of those studies that were between 70, 110, it was for one or maybe two buildings. We went with 153 because we thought 50,000 per building was a safe number. And I think I can speak for all of us, including the manager, that 150 is what we're seeking. And if we get bids that are greater than 150, well, then we need to alter the scope of, then we need to alter the scope of work. But I think what we've, what we've looked at with other communities and what they spent on renderings and some rough floor plans and space needs and things like that, we felt 50,000 per building was comfortable. If I can add in also, uh, one, in addition to that, and the chief, both chiefs did a good job looking at other costs, uh, the other piece of this is if you're just looking at fire, the fire operations, then you could probably get a reduced rate for two facilities because they're just looking at fire. But here we have to look at the operations for police and fire. So it's analyzing the operations of two different departments. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's going to be any reduction. Maybe, again, I checked with a couple of consultants and they said just in general, $50,000 per facility. Um, you know, maybe because we have two that are fire, there'll be an opportunity to reduce that a little. As we said, we don't have to spend it. If it comes in less, that's great. Mm -hmm. But um, that was just a general rule, rule of thumb. Okay. Kim, anything else? Um, the, the scope is very broad because you want to look at your current facilities, see if there's expansion capabilities, but you also want to look at a complex, a public safety complex. Will it be tiered so that if, if a consultant comes in and says, sure, you can renovate this jury square and do this, 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 and this, and get the space you need. Would that negate the need for a complex um, proposal or looking at a public safety complex? I'll take it. Yeah, so. Oh, go ahead. Um, I mean, if you look at number five on your scope of work, I'm not sure if you have it in front of you. It says identification of the most beneficial and cost-effective long-term solution. So I, I think that fits into exactly what you're saying is that, um, and I'm not looking for an architect to come in here and say, you need a public safety complex. That's 
th that's not what I'm looking for. So I think our statement on number five, where we're looking to identify the most beneficial and cost-effective solution long-term, I would, I would think that that would mean a consultant would rate them and say, you can gain your space and gain another 50 years out of a building by adding on some base space and doing this and doing that at this cost versus building a brand new public safety complex. I, that's my expectation that they would rank them based on that number five in the scope. Okay. Um, Kevin and then Ann. Kevin? Just uh, kind of to Ms. Holstrom's question though. So that number there is a best estimate that you're asking for a warrant? I mean, shouldn't we be doing these things? Are you going out to three vendors and getting quotes saying it's going to range from what, what if your low bid on this comes back at two hundred and ten thousand dollars? So the one fifty doesn't surprise me to for that scope of work. What yeah. if they come back? To the chair, we can't go out to bid without an appropriation in place, but we did check with one or two consultants that we've worked with before, and they were the ones that provided us the $50,000 per facility figure. So if we were looking at two buildings, it would have been 100, three buildings, 150. Short of actually going out and getting quotes, we won't know until we go out to bid. We actually have to put a whole bid package together because of the cost of this. So you're, uh, under master law, you, you don't go out for bid until you've got your appropriation in place to actually pay for what you're, you're bidding. Okay, and maybe it's just a logistics where I'm using the wrong terminology, but how do you appropriate your, an exact amount if you do not know? It is our best estimate based on what other communities got for actual bids and what various consultants have given us as a ballpark range until you actually put it out there. It depends on what time of year you're putting it out there. It depends on how do we further define the scope. There are all these things that would be in the RFP that are going to drive that cost. The best you can do is look at recent RFPs, which is what we did, looked at recent studies. Um, it, unfortunately, it happens a lot. Sometimes things come in actually less. Um, and it, as the chief said, if it came in more, then we would have to go back and revise the scope. So we'd have to go back and actually pull some things out of the scope to keep it within the budget that we're going to be given by town meeting. But there's a concern in doing that, and it goes back to when I started on this board, I think the construction was in process on the police station, which I don't remember the, the process that got to that point and those decisions or lack of decisions on that, and we're living with that now 17 years later. But do we want to limit the scope to fit a budget number, or do we want the best advice we're going to get on this? Mm -hmm. Now, our board's responsible for making sure the monies are in place or not in place or we're spending it wisely. Kind of goes back to my first point to Eddie. Hey, look, we've got an extra $24,000 here that's sort of available under the free cash policy. Are we going to be penny wise, pound short, whatever that expression is, by, and trust me, 150 grand seems like a hell of a lot of money to me, but I would rather get a really darn good report that we can rely on, especially to move forward with something for the police, certainly sooner rather than later, find out what the hell's going on there, than if we're gonna spend an extra 10 grand on this. I mean, should we be strategizing a little better because we gotta go back to town meeting for funding and will free cash be available for us to do that later in the year or later in the fiscal year? <coughs> Comments? Let me try to wrap my arms around this. Um, and that's a good question. Uh, I, Julie is right. We, we couldn't put this thing out to bid until we knew we have a, a, uh, a vote by town meeting that appropriates these funds. Because there's a lot of work that goes into the bids and there's a cost associated with it. So you can't do in advance because we don't have the money to do that. But if the 150 should come in short, whatever the value that may be, whether it be 5,000, 10, we'd have to make a decision at that point in time, either A, to go back to town meeting and ask for a, an amendment or a supplemental appropriation to make that work. Or we could devise the RFP where there may be some alternate bids that we would be allowed to kind of cherry pick and, and decide what we want to do. Uh, and if it comes in short, if it comes in 125, whatever balance is remaining in that account, we'll close out the free cash once that uh, scope of services is complete and a report is provided. 
we could also go back to the finance committee and, and take a sum of money, however small that may be, or large it may be, out of the reserve account. I mean, that's something that we would have to take a look at once that final number is known. But I hate to dilute the scope of services uh, in order to make it fit, to your point, Mr. Chairman, uh, and do really a disservice to the town because we're not getting the information that we were looking for in that original scope. Through the chair, we had a, a similar situation um, a, with a couple of items at the library. If I recall, it was uh, both the roof and the carpet. We had received some estimates, which are the best you can do without actually getting a bid. Um, and we got the estimates, and when we actually went out to get the actual written quotes and the bid, it came in far more than we originally were, were told. And unfortunately, uh, we had to come back and make some shifts of, of funds, go back to town meeting, um, so it took a little <coughs> bit longer to even get this thing done. I, I hope that with the 150, there's a little bit of a cushion. Again, thinking $50,000 a building, I'm thinking two of the buildings are under the operations of the fire department. A lot of this study is studying their operations to see what their operational needs are. So if two of the buildings have the same operations or similar, mm -hmm. that might cut down on that overall cost, and then the police would be a standalone. So maybe you'd even come in a little under. But like Eddie said, when you put an RFP together, you could put add deducts in it and just put different items in that we would like to have, but it's not necessary to have, and therefore, if it, the funding is available, you can actually do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dan, question? Um, Kim asked it already. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Great questions. And by the way, I still think it's a lot of money, but I'm just concerned where we've got, <coughs> we really truly have an extra $24,000. I would hate to be whacking the reserve account because we've got no way to get access to that other 24. That's going to go to free cash if we don't otherwise bring it over, right? I mean, we couldn't park that in stabilization with an earmark for I, this I, if necessary. I, I think if we thought 150 was not going to be adequate, we would have chewed into a, a, a portion of that additional okay. 24. So right now, we have every reason to believe that 150 would be sufficient enough to meet the scope that has been provided. Okay. Um, and, you know, I guess the market dictates at the time you go out, you know, right. uh, what that's going to be. But I think based upon some of the information that the chief has received, we believe 150 is going to be enough. Okay. Um, okay. Any more questions? Yep. <clears throat> there is 50000 for roof repairs at the PD in this capital budget, correct? Are we moving forward with that because we have to do that this year? Through the chair, if I could turn to uh, DBW Director Bill Quilfam and, and, and actually work with the chief on that because I think he just got some information on that a couple of days ago. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, it's, it's a project we do plan on moving forward with. Um, we're probably going to be modifying the scope relative to what repairs are going to occur to the roof, but because it is a, a town facility, we do feel as though repairs are needed. Um, I did meet with the architect just as recently as yesterday to discuss some of uh, some of the modifications to the scope of work, which I'll be sitting down with the chief probably next week sometime to, to talk to him about them. But we do want to move forward with them just to protect the, the town's asset. Uh, just on a side note, I'm, I'm hopeful that it will be less than the 50000 though. Thank you. <laughs> we, are, we are, too. I'm just concerned about Yeah. Well, it leads into a question I have. More how money soon on. are we going out, assuming this passes, how soon are we going out to bid for this study? If this past town meeting in October, it probably takes a good, a good four weeks to put a, a good RFP together. It's got to go through legal counsel. It actually has advertising requirements because of the amount with the central register, so that adds several weeks. Uh, you're probably First talking day, yeah. January okay. to put it out. Okay. Um, but I, I, I agree. This is something that we've discussed. We, we're looking ahead at all of the long-term capital needs of these facilities, yeah. and that has to be taken into consideration when making a decision. If we, you, you keep those buildings, you add on to the buildings, you renovate it, you continue to put money in. I know with regard to the roof, there it's causing some other problems that are going to end up costing money if we don't address the roof so even if we're looking at not doing something for five years in the next five years if we don't 
right. do something with the roof, it's causing problems, or like I should say, the HVAC system is actually causing some of the roof problems too. So we've applied for grants for the HVAC system three times now at the state level, and the payback is so long on it because it's a very expensive item. We haven't been approved, but we'll keep looking for alternate sources. We always do. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, final comments, enough comments? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Thank you. Uh, Chief Coleman, I think we're all set. I think we have two more articles for uh, Chief Slocus. So. Thank you very Good much for your you. support. Have a good night. Uh, let's see. So that was Article 14. In Article 15, to see if town meeting will vote to appropriate $30,000 from general fund revenues to replace the backup radio at the water tower site by the police chief. Chief, any comments on that? I know this is, you went, we what, replaced both systems if this is approved now? This, this is to replace the money that we already had appropriated to um, replace the backup radio with the water tower. However, our primary repeater went down, and within a week, our secondary repeater went down, and it cost us over $30,000 to replace those, to have communications. So we used that money, and this is to uh, replace that money to now replace the backup, backup. Uh, system that's at the water tower okay. on Luster Street. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so voted. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, once again, the other one sponsored by the police chief, Article control. 22, is will be removed. Yep. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go through the uh, DPW articles. Uh, first one I have is Article 6. Bill Coyle's here. Bill, good to see you. Way too many meetings this week. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good a evening. lot of FaceTime on TV. Nice. <laughs> he does. Nice. Yeah. All right, uh, Article 6, very quickly, see if town meeting will vote to appropriate $5,000 from general fund revenues to abandon the monitoring wells of the DPW facility located at 5 Millbury Street. Uh, just brief on this, is the end of a 20-plus year journey. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, a project that is we've been anticipating for, for quite some time. We're happy that it's finally moving forward. Our environmental consultant is in the process of preparing the necessary documents to close out the monitoring uh, at 5 Millbury Street uh, due to a contamination that was done, as you mentioned, over 20 years ago. Um, we're hopeful that that will close out uh, based on our discussions with our consultant. And the expectation is once that's closed, we will then need to move forward with uh, with abandoning the, the well, and th that's what the $5,000 appropriation would cover. Okay. Kevin? <coughs> what does abandoning mean? What, and where does the cost come in? It's, it's the actual process of how they fill the well. Um, it, it's a bent, bentonite seal when they fill the well and actually will be going through the Board of Health for a permit and um, to oversee the work as well. But it's, it's just the amount of material that they use in, in the wells to basically cap them off. Okay, thank you. Good question, I was gonna ask that. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so voted, thank you. So after almost 20 years on the board, I won't see that anymore, that's great. <clears throat> Article 7, <laughs> Chief Town Meeting will vote to appropriate $25,000 $25, from general fund revenues to replace the conveyor belt system on two DPW six-wheel dump trucks. Um, and I think the comments from the other night, Bill, I know you're losing your voice, was that you already fixed one <coughs> and these have to go out for outside repair, correct? Co correct, Mr. Chairman. There's uh, a total of three trucks. One, uh, the conveyor system for distributing the salt uh, completely failed and so that truck uh, could not wait. We sent that out for repairs and that we were using or we are using the fleet maintenance account to cover the cost. That was just about $12,000 dollars 
and then the, after further inspection by our fleet mechanic, he felt as though the, the other two trucks that are the, these three are the older trucks within our fleet. Um, these two are also in need of repair. And so the $25,000 would cover repairing the, the other two six wheel uh, dump trucks as well. Now, do these meet CIP requirements if we could have gone, gone that route? What's the what's the unit cost though? They're but they'd be twelve thousand pieces, but they're un unanticipated. Oh yeah, no, I I understand okay. that just if um, we we caught the corrosion, I guess a little earlier on this, so so no, because it's immediate need, obviously. Uh, I'll go with that. <laughs> well, I th well, I think these conveyor belts is a level of maintenance that goes along with this. Uh, that is done by fleet, I'm sure, or by the. But the, ma the maintenance on, on the system or the components would occur by, by fleet, but because of the, the, the complexities and re replacing these completely, we have to send these out, um, okay. which is why they're 12,000 a piece to, to do the work. So my other question is, and it's actually to Eddie, and I think I asked you this the other day, but I didn't write my answer down. Uh, why doesn't this qualify for being taken care of under our free cash policy? Or does it? I guess one could, you could argue that it is a one-time expense, although this is a replacement. It's not a, um, mm -hmm. it's, not the, it's not the original install of this conveyor belt. So to me, that's, that's a maintenance issue, an operational issue. Mm -hmm. um, so these kind of things should be handled within, I believe, in the operating budget, uh, because it could feel it is unforeseen, um, and it's something that probably should be provided for on the operational side of the budget. Okay. Motion to recommend. Uh, just a, I'm sorry, okay. uh, brief question. <coughs> is this equipment uh, um, able to be moved to other equipment at some point? So we have a new conveyor on an older truck, you buy a new truck or another truck fails. Sure. Is, are these components interchangeable? Good, good question. I, I would expect that uh, my hopes are, uh, and I was looking at the uh, the inventory of our six wheel dump trucks today, kind of go looking at when we first created the D DPW. Um, at that time, we had uh, 10 six wheel dump trucks, several of them in, in disrepair. The town has um, made s significant strides in moving forward, replacing a lot of the old equipment. So we had trucks when DPW was first formed. Uh, the oldest truck was 1983, and it was um, that truck had just been taken off the road. And and since then, we've also had some small one-ton dump trucks. The two, three oldest six-wheel dump trucks that we have currently, one is a 2007, and two of them are 2004. So. These the three trucks are in still pretty good condition, so I would expect that we don't have we don't have any new six wheel dump trucks program this year. We have one in FY19, and I think we have one in either 2021 or so. So I would expect that the the three trucks that we have currently, we would keep these trucks probably for at least another five and potentially seven eight years. So I, I think the life of the conveyor system will probably would stay within that vehicle that it's going to be installed in. Okay. Thank you. All set? Good. Okay, we have a motion to recommend. So move. We have a second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Thank you. Article 8, see if town meeting will vote to appropriate $5,000 from the general fund revenues for the landfill monitoring well. Mr. Chairman, this uh, is something that our consultant uh, has requested. We currently have three monitoring wells. There, there are supposed to be four. And since, again, since I've been DPW director, this fourth monitoring well has never been located. It, they are under the impression that possibly, uh, with the use of ATV vehicles in the area, at some point in time, um, it was either damaged and it's overgrown. But it's uh, it has, like I said, it's been at least nine years and it's never been located. The reporting has been consistently done utilizing the three monitoring wells that we have. We monitor the groundwater uh, twice a year, and this is a recommendation that we, we, we should move forward and replace this fourth well. Great. Any questions? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's see. Article 9, 
Um, this is to the energy manager and DPW directory, so uh, you're it. Uh, at CF Town Meeting, we'll vote to appropriate $100,000 from general fund revenues for street lights LED conversion. This is for audit design and buy or act on anything relative thereto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll do my best to, to cover this. Uh, um, this is something that we've been looking at for well over a year now with the town manager and with the energy manager um, as well. And we've had several meetings. I, I know uh, Patrick Burke did a presentation with the select board on Monday night, did an excellent job presenting this. And it, I think the, the key with this entire project is the, the payback. So the total cost of this project, the, we, this first 100,000 covers the audit, the design, and purchasing the existing street lights. As we move forward, the total appropriation would ultimately be 400,000, but we would be reimbursed, I believe, somewhere in the order, order of another 120. 3000 So net cost is going to be, and I'm going by memory, about $287,000 net cost to the town. And the expect, expectation is with the LED lights, the savings that, that we will incur will pay for itself in about 3.6 years of time. So over, over time, it's going to be a significant benefit to the community cost-wise. Okay. Kev? Just a question, and maybe it's uh, to the town manager yourself, but this audit design, I mean, have we looked at the streetlights in town as, as a whole? I mean, I know there's a significant, I've tried to look it up before I ran out of time for how much we put into electrical costs for streetlights. Streetlights came into existence a long time ago uh, when car headlights weren't as uh, efficient and lighting wasn't efficient on homes. And, you know, are there places that we no longer need streetlights on some side streets? Are, uh, have we looked into there's advances in solar lighting where we wouldn't have any electrical costs um, after that have you know significant battery life you know sure. I, I looked quickly online when I saw this and you know they six days worth of battery life off of one charge I mean are they looking at a bigger project I understand the energy savings sure um, but you know are there lights that should be just eliminated in its entirety as to being opposed to being replaced I, uh, I, how in depth is the project uh, through the energy mr. Management? chairman I can they're going to be locating every street light that we have GPS coordinates so, uh, where they are preparing a report, what the wattage is of each each street light. Typically, they're about 50 watts for the most part. Um, as far as recommendation for adding or removing, we can talk to them about that. I think that's something they may look towards um, the town to do. I, I can say it's I, I haven't noticed street lights that aren't needed. I hate to, my, my feeling is once the street light is there, as soon as you try to remove it, that's when we would be criticized for removing a street light for public safety reasons. So I would be more inclined to think we would consider maybe adding street lights um, more so than removing any. Uh, but just in, in general, I, I haven't seen, it's more lights being out than needing additional street lights. But we can talk to them about whether or not they would make any recommendations such as that once they're, uh, once they're into the audit and coming back with a design for us. But it's good, good suggestion. Tim? What is our annual appropriation for street lights? Um, I have it here. Yeah. Well, he's looking, the, the estimated savings was going to be $74,000 a year. Was it uh, 25? Uh, Julie, was that, uh, that was more than just electricity, that was electricity and maintenance costs, right? Right, right. that, I believe it was the, uh, the maintenance, I think it was 25,000. That's the electricity I I was about me. 50 for a total of about 75. 117,000 for FY18. And that's correct, Mr. Chairman. The, the maintenance cost is built into that savings. Right. We, as a department, we don't see that cost because it's, it's built into right. the fee that's charged um, for the for individual light, street light. Those, those are replaced by third party, right? Typically, what happens is a street light goes out. Um, if if it's owned um, by the town, we would contact National Grid they would come out and we would provide them with the light um, but typically what happens is they come during the evening hours and quite quite often they'll just replace the light themselves but because we own it they're supposed to come to us get the light from us and then install the light again because it's after hours i think they look at it it's more of an inconvenience to them 
they just put the light in because it probably cost them more to come back to us. Um, if they own it outright, they replace the light and um, we never hear from them. So there's currently not a lot of work on our end. When the lights go out, we notify them and it, it's taken care of. Going forward, we will have to prepare a maintenance contract and have that in place so if a light does, does go out, we can con contact the company that a light went out and then they would um, replace the light. And we're hoping that that is very infrequent and there's a 10 year warranty on these lights. And uh, so that's uh, the first at least 10 years, we're hoping to be minimal cost. Okay, any other questions? Now, this will be followed up over time by another 300,000 plus in um, Warren articles, stuff we will have to pay up front for. Mm -hmm. and there will be a reimbursement, hopefully a reimbursement of 170,000 plus, I think after the project is complete so, to us. So this is gonna be a, a multi-year project. Okay. So this oh, is the first of us. Excuse me. Excuse me. There is a grant round that's coming up. So yes, the, the next phase would be in May. So we hope to get this audit done. Then we apply for the next grant round in the next, I believe it's in the spring. And then in May, we would get the remaining appropriation. And then it does take a little bit of time. But I would say within the year. Oh, OK. And, and that's a very good point, Julie, because when we were meeting with CMRPC, what they had indicated to us is that there was a minimum dollar value the town needed to appropriate, and I think it was somewhere around eighty-four thousand dollars, eighty-seven, to be able to get us, ourselves into a position where we are um, secure a position for the moving forward with the grant. So th this first step gets us to a point where we would then um, basically have an agreement with CMR, uh, MAPC, rather I think it was not CMRPC, MAPC. Uh, for the grant. So that's why this initial 100000 is critical because it gets us to a point where we are now in line for the grant. So our net cost, if this 100 should get approved and the grant money should uh, be approved and, and awarded to the town, is about $180,000. So, uh, and uh, estimated savings at this point of roughly 70000 per year. Um, so we may be able to convert a portion of that street light <laughs> electrical uh, cost towards the uh, uh, retrofitting of the lights and then either through a loan authorization or through some other funding mechanism bridge that gap to get the project done. Okay, good. Uh, any other questions? Motion we'll to recommend. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, so voted. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that's Article 9. Now, Article 10, City of Town Meeting will vote to amend Article 4 CIP funds of the May 2nd, 2017 Annual Town Meeting from Fencing Lemansky Baseball to Fencing Parks. Um, Bill, I, I guess we're just trying to be a little less specific so you have some more flexibility to uh, yes, Mr. take care of... Uh, other fences. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. We yeah. there was, I believe, twenty-five thousand um, was appropriated for replacement of Lemansky fence on the baseball field. Uh, bids have come in lower than expected, and so there is remaining balance that we would like to use on other fence repairs within the parks. And in, in speaking uh, with the CFO, because it specifically states Lemansky baseball, we don't have the flexibility of now repairing Franklin Park fencing or a different field. So we, we asked to have the language modified so that we have the ability to repair other fence locations on the, in the parks. Great. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Article 11 to see if town meeting will vote to appropriate $30,000 from special revenue Yang Sheng for the relocation of the skateboard park at Lemansky Park or act on anything relative there too. Um, I would just ask that our committee remember we're just dealing with the dollars here. We know the intent of this article is relative to the dog park. Um, so I believe that's all clear to us. The intent is the, I'll, I'll call it the dog park. Folks would prefer to have this site. Uh, I think town administration and even the skateboard park people are amenable to moving their park uh, 
and Bill, you had mentioned the other night that basically that was going to be renovated up or replaced uh, the equipment there within no more than five years anyway. So that's I'm correct. Just trying to summarize. That's and, correct. Okay. Yes. So that's what we have in front of us uh, on on this. It, I don't believe it's in our purview to be questioning the true intent behind this. That's for other boards and for town meeting to kind of chew on how they want it to be. So to me, this is uh, an early request for renovation and, and moving the park. And from what we understand, the skate park people, and they raised the original money, they seem to be okay with this being moved in with the renovation. I'll open it up to questions and comments. Kevin? Does the language of that article, when you say it could be used for other things relative to the skate park, does it the fact that it only says relocation limit it to having to be moved? Uh, Ed and I spoke on this, and I think we had kind of come to the conclusion that the, the, the intent is the relocation part, uh, to be clear on that. Yeah. I asked the same question um, because if I'm a town meeting member, not to get to that, but if I'm up for, yeah, let's take care of the skate park, but I'm not in favor of the dog park thing. Do I have a choice to amend this? And I think your opinion, Ed, was that that's away from the spirit of the article itself. Yeah, the intent is clear. It's for the relocation of Skateboard Park. Uh, so to do anything other than that would be in conflict with the intent of the article. Uh, that being said, um, I think it's limited. If the dog park, if this should pass and the dog park grant, for whatever reason, does not get approved through the Stanton Foundation, then any improvements to the existing skateboard park could not be spent out of this. Either this would have to be amended on the town meeting floor, closed out to free cash, because uh, quite honestly, we had planned on putting some rehabilitation money in the CIP uh, in 2023. 20, 2023, correct. Uh, which is the next round of CIP that's coming before you if, in fact, this project was not moving forward. Um, so we're going to see what happens with this warrant article on town meeting, um, and that's going to determine how we treat uh, those that rehab project if this project does not move forward. And our options here are recommend, not recommend, defer. I think we have enough information here not to put this on hold. So I would strongly suggest that we try not to do that. Um, another question, Kevin? I, I guess not understanding or knowing enough about what that spirit is behind it. I hate to put my stamp on it before the town meeting thinking the well, finance committee is, you know, unanimously recommended this. Uh, if anything, I guess I would lean towards if we're going to, if town administration and, the, and the, the petitioners want to explain to town meeting, then I would be up for deferring uh, and to the petitioners um, and let them explain all the facets that are going on behind the scenes relative to that $30,000 and, and how they're all going to line up. Is that a motion? I'll make a motion to defer to the petitioner. All right. We're still open for comments. Uh, second. Third. We have a second. Uh, we're still open for comments on this. Okay. Question? Yep. Um, so we're just relocating it. We're taking the, the, so we're saying that the park needs work and it's maybe, I don't know if, how old it is, but we're just taking it, moving it and putting it down, right? Even though they probably need it. The, um, if, I, if I could, the, the park would be relocated, so mm -hmm. we would have to completely excavate a, a new area. Mm -hmm. So the DPW staff um, would excavate out an area, uh, it's about 6,500 or 7,000 square feet or so, plus or minus. So this, this, this relocated park would be smaller than the current skate, mm -hmm. skateboard park. The current skateboard park is about 12,000 square feet. And so the new one would be, be smaller, 7,000. We would excavate this area out. We would um, install the gravel, compact it, and then hire an outside contractor to pave it. And then if there's any fencing around, we do have a preliminary estimate for the $30,000. So it would be completely relocated to a different area, to the, the, the back, I'll call it the back right corner of Lomansky Park. When you first come into the entrance, it would be right on your right. It's kind of up, up, up gradient a little bit. Uh, it would be relocated to that area. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank and you. That, and that would include new equipment on 
that site, correct? Well, some of the, some of the equipment we could, I think we can reuse. Uh, we would move the a lot of the equipment, and then if, there's, if we need to purchase some new equipment, we could do that as well. But I think we'll be able to reuse a lot that's there. Okay, Julie? Yeah, through the chair, just to, uh, it might help to clarify a little, because the Board of Selectmen took a vote to support the dog park at the current skateboard park site. So that necessitated the, uh, this article to relocate the skateboard park. So as Ed said, the spirit of this is based on a Board of Selectmen vote. So there was a recommendation to the Board by a dog park committee for options A and B. The Board chose option, well actually, there were options A and B, the, the dog park committee only wanted option A. That's what they presented. The Board of Selectmen agreed. They voted that. Uh, everybody recognizing that can only happen if we can relocate the skateboard park. So if the skateboard park wasn't going to be re relocated, that was part of the entire conversation about the dog park, that we had to get the funds from town meeting to relocate it or that site was not a viable site. Mm -hmm. It was further conversation. Are we holding up the skateboard folks from having a renovated lot? Uh, which was my original thought on it, and I think Bill made it very clear that this is coming on to the CIP, so it will get done in terms of the renovation. Mm -hmm. It was cycled out five years. For some reason, I thought it was in like three or four years. So that will get taken care of uh, on a schedule that Bill had already preset on there. So it's not really being held hostage in terms of if there was some back and forth or if this failed. The 30000 goes away, it goes to free mm -hmm. cash, as Ed said. Nothing gets done with the skate park until a, a, a subsequent decision or request. Mm -hmm. So I think we have enough information once again. We don't need to put this on hold. We're not going to get any additional data in the next three or four weeks. So you made a motion to defer, correct? Yes. And we have a second on this? Okay. Any other comments? All in favor of deferring this to the petitioner? Aye. Opposed? No. All right, so we've got three in favor, two opposed. That's three is, hmm? Doesn't carry. Yes. Doesn't pass. Okay. Um, Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> I'm opposed. Kevin? Opposed? Okay. Uh, how do we move forward on this? No motion? It's interesting that didn't, another one passed. Um, I guess you could, vote, I would say you, you could make another motion for another yeah. vote. Well, if, if yeah. someone wants to make another motion, if they've had a change of heart after this. I, I mean, your other option is you're not. Or you have five members, you may want to take a delay a vote and take it before town meeting. So you have two other Correct. members voting. Somehow you were going to force a hole down my throat, weren't you? <laughs> Uh, well, unless, there's unless no there's choice at this point. Well, the, right, I think the only unless other option you motion. have is to make unless, a motion. Unless there's a, not, another, another, motion every, another motion to defer it. A motion to defer. All right. Once again, we have a motion to defer to the petitioner. Second. All in, to defer to the petitioner. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Kim second that. Aye. And opposed? No. Okay, so that'll pass with four votes. Right. Okay. So we have eventually decided to defer to petition. Four <coughs> okay, great. It's a good conversation. Uh, Bill, I think you have one more, don't you? Do I? Uh, where's that at? No, that would have been the, uh, that, the, the one stop your, sign your famous yeah, I think stop sign. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's great. Uh, Bill, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have appreciate a good evening. It. Uh, Bye -bye. Thanks for the information. Okay. So that leaves us with uh, the town manager and CFO items. So we're back to mm -hmm. page one on this. Uh, article two, we're moving some monies around the net increase. Um, this be to the operating budget. Uh, 82,408. 82,000. The significant increases that we have here, 25 to the reserve fund, which I think we had all sort of thought was going to happen anyways. Um, there's a, um, a, a six-month 
The economic development position is funding starting in January, so that's a six month number at 25 grand additional. Uh, the uh, dog licenses, Eddie had explained that to me, kind of a reimbursement in there, right? Uh, yeah, um, the last town meeting there was a hundred thousand um, dollar appropriation for facility improvements. In that facility improvements was a replacement of the dog cages down at the kennel. That's a dog related expense that was being funded through general fund revenues. So we're just recapturing what it's basically a reimbursement to the general fund out of mm -hmm. dog licenses for an ACO dog related operational cost. And the other big item was uh, an increase to the electricity expense, not street lights, electricity of 25 grand. This uh, will bring our budget up, uh, operating budget up to 60 million five hundred ninety-seven thousand nine hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. So I'll open it up to any questions or comments. Um, question. Yep. Uh, can you talk about the economic development position? Sure. So over the last few years. Uh, there has been a need um, in my office, well, a need to help mm -hmm. me out. And I end up doing a lot of the economic development. The town planner ends up doing a lot of the economic development, but the reality is we've taken on a lot of economic development activities with nobody to do it. I deferred seeking a request for this for a couple of years because there were other priorities that I felt needed to be met in other departments. We had an interdepartmental meeting with all of the department heads this year and said, what is the priority? What are the priorities going to be for funding? And I, I was happy to hear, and, and even though I'd said I wouldn't take it, all the department heads said, you need to get that economic development person because it's affecting all of them. Mm -hmm. If all of my time or much of my time is going toward economic development, there are other pieces that aren't aren't getting done. So I can just tell you just quickly, I'm just looking at my um, list here, just it, it's incredible when you start putting together a list of what would an economic development person do. So to back up, we had an economic development plan that was funded by a $25,000 grant this year. Part of that economic development plan, and that was done through a, a resident group, it's um, being looked at through the master plan as well, was the recommendation to build capacity in economic development. Because at the end of the day, if you work with businesses and you work on business development, it's going to come back and tax Taxes. And we've seen that. We've seen the growth in revenues on the uh, tax side. You know, it's averaged $700,000 for the last three years. Economic development does ultimately pay off. So the recommendation came for an economic development position. The consultant, as part of that plan, helped us with a, um, he helped look into, he did some research on what the potential cost would be of that position and what some of the potential requirements would be and helped us with a job description on it. But just the, the reality of what we need done is, um, and these are all the things, again, some of it falls to the town planner, who also is our energy manager. So he's got a full plate as well. Um, master plan development, master plan implementation, Drury Square implementation, Drury Square Business Association, wayfinding, aesthetic improvements, guarded park improvements, the creation of the fa uh, facade improvement program. That's all under Drury Square. Uh, the creation of a bank loan pool, uh, again, these are all coming under the economic development plan, and it had been in the previous master plan as well, and a lot of this never took place because there was no capacity to do it. But a lot of this where needs to be done hasn't been even touched yet, and some of this ha is underway. Um, the economic development plan and implementation, the housing plan development, which was just approved this week, so it's going into the state, and then we have another whole set of work that we have to do with the state on that housing plan. The uh, Economic Development Committee 2012 recommendations was a, a list of things that we should be doing on that. The creation of marketing recruitment materials, um, we're, we're currently doing that now. Um, the creation of the new Economic Development website that the Economic Development Committee has been talking about, we just don't have the capacity to get that set up yet. Uh, the annual updates of the Division of Local Services and DOR uh, charts and graphs were required to put those, uh, a lot of that information together. The outreach in the meetings with the brokers, the outreach to potential new businesses, the outreach to existing businesses through business retention, all the bond rating sections which come up once a year. Um, the bond rating report has to be updated and there's about 25 pages of economic development uh, work that has to be done and that falls on, on primarily on me um, with the town planner taking on the, the project specific pieces of it. We also have the bond rating tour of development projects that we're going to be doing next year and that takes several weeks to pull that tour together with the bond rating agencies. 
Um, the promotion of the parcels, I've started, I've been working on that for the Lowe's, Dartmouth, Millbury Street, Washington Street, uh, Technology Drive, and Auburn Industrial Park. It was getting together all the information, working with the chamber, contacting every broker, making sure that they're okay with it, and now trying to get the word out there that we have these parcels for development. Uh, the Mary D. Stone and Julie Bancroft School Redevelopment Projects, those are all economic development, and right now that's just me. Um, and that is uh, in the process of in just um, the master development agreements, the design charrettes, the community meetings, uh, the coordination with the state on the tax credits, and the overall project management. And each of those is going to be two to three years. Um, the, all of the RMDs are registered marijuana dispensaries. Right now we have two that are before us uh, that have both received uh, letters of non-opposition to go forward to the state. Whether they each go forward or not is another story, but that would fall under economic development, as would uh, all of the, the information on the mall billboards, the, um, the zoning to try to help a business to get um, additional revenues, that's economic development. Um, and then I would say that under grants <coughs> and implementation, we have seven grants right now that are just strictly economic development grants. We also have um, the, the um, Auburn Street Reconstruction Project Right now, Ed and I are working with Bill on the design of the Auburn Street uh, infrastructure project, which is going to be funded by the state, but we're trying to make sure that it gets designed in, in coordination with the Drury Square recommendations. So we have some spaces to use. So that's that's been a major thing. And then just really briefly, um, right now, Matt uh, Benoit picks up a lot of this. The liaison to the Economic Development Committee, the liaison to the Housing Subcommittee, the liaison to the Mass Office of Business Development, the liaison to all the brokers and clients of their who call here looking for economic development information, the site search assistance, the financial programs assistance, the letters that we're required to send whenever anybody applies for um, uh, 501c3, uh, excuse me, uh, 504. Um, programs, which are loan programs through the SBA, and then just tracking the economic development legislation, just that alone. There's, um, I, I do that and I will probably still do that, but I could use some help with that because there's seven or eight bills right now that have a major impact on the town that we have to watch carefully and potentially testify on. Economic development bill, zoning bill, solar development bill, local option excise bill, gas excise bill, pilot agreement bill, marketing prioritized development sites bill, and the chapter 61A bill. Those are all economic development. So when you come up with this list of, you know, what would an economic development person do and someone said, would it, could it be part-time, I could tell you this would easily be a full-time person oh, yeah. to do this. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, yep. so is this a, a person that we're hiring with benefits and everything or is it a consultant? This would be a full-time position. Okay. So the, with benefits and, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a, um, so if this is half a year, it's going to be 50000 a year? Correct. Okay. The, the, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say this, but the the average cost of that position is far higher than that. Mm -hmm. It's probably in the sixty-five to eighty thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. But we were hoping by bringing someone in at a lower level, maybe more of an entry level position, we can do some training and get them mm -hmm. experience. We're not going to hire anyone experience for fifty thousand. Um, and. It would be worth going out once or twice to see if we can get someone who's willing to come in who has enough skills that we can help train and get them there. And if that doesn't work, we're going to have to revisit it. Because um, we've seen what happens if we don't pay people enough. We lose them, but we may not get them. Right. So we've talked, uh, I think, even last year that, you know, an economic development person on, you know, senior administration staff is the way it, to go. And like you just said, it, it, uh, it fosters, it brings money in. Why? Why are we lowballing it? Why why are we doing 50-55 when you should be all the things you just listed? We should be looking at somebody with a MBA, CPA. You know, I mean, why are we starting low? Why do we why why try and get somebody fresh out of with a college with a bachelor's degree and build them up as opposed to yeah. some of the experience and the connections in the industry? Uh, Part of the reason was uh, if we move them up to the other level, it affects several other positions that are not at that level. So it had a domino effect, which meant it wasn't just moving this one in. You can't bring a position in under someone who's going to be a supervisor who makes less than them. So we, while we've been working to try to adjust the salaries that need to be adjusted, because some of them are still very low, uh, some of them are very low. and it. That would trigger the need to adjust those immediately. So in the long term, it had a much more costly effect to put it in at the sixty-five to eighty thousand dollar range because it 
it affected a number of other positions. Is that because of where you put it on the org chart, though? It, it's, uh, it's that, and it's also uh, when you do the comparisons of what other similar positions are with education levels, responsibilities. Um, I, just that, that list you just rattled off, you put that on uh, any headhunter website and some talented people that are di division heads, that, that mm -hmm. list right there is going to put yeah. them right in line with uh, yourself. The decision really came down to, to, to get someone with experience at that level, we'd have to make them a department head. Uh, which would require just a change in the um, in some of the org charts within offices. So that would have to become really its own department head. Um, I don't think you've convinced Kevin that that's not a bad no. idea. I know Ed's yeah, holding and, the purse string, yep. so he's it, probably it, the one pushing back on this. But I, and it may have to morph into that. Sure. But we'd have to do that over a period of yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with what Kevin said completely I, on that. I totally agree with you. I, I think, and I think we've gotten, the town as a whole has gotten itself into a situation where the salaries in many of the positions are so low that we're not able to either keep good people that we have or attract qualified people when they leave. And we've seen that, and we've tried to adjust those salaries to try to stop mm -hmm. that from happening. Um, the problem is when you create a brand new position like this. Uh, I thought it'd be worth at least trying it one one time, advertising and see what we get, uh, because there you know there may be towns around us that aren't in, uh, aren't able to hire a position, and maybe there's somebody who works for a town whose position is on the chopping block who may be willing to come here. Um, so I think it's worth a try again. I, I would not be surprised if we didn't find the ideal person. It, we shouldn't hire just anyone. This is a this is kind of a specialized field, um, and Absolutely. you know I, I think I can. I hope I have enough um, feelers out in the communities to, to be able to figure out who might be good for this. Because I did this for you know 20 years. I did economic development, but and there are a lot of people out there. But there's also potentially some programs that are out there where you have some recent graduates that are coming out with degrees in. Um, not necessarily economic development, but in business development and things that you could probably use that. Um, I, I hope we can do that, and if not, it, it is going to require an adjustment on a number of other levels, which is something we were just trying to avoid having to do. But if we have to do what we do. Yeah. And quite honestly, I think that's why we are recommending an increase in the uh, reserve account, because that will give us some flexibility during the course of the year to maybe deal with a situation such as this or something very similar. Um, as part of the financial policies, uh, we have recommended early on that the reserve account should represent about one half of one percent of the net operating budget, not including debt and interest. And that amount is, and I, I did prepare something, but I, I don't think I brought it. Um, that puts us at about $260,000 of reserve monies. I think with the adjustment, it's going to put us at about 240. So we're getting very close to where we want to be. We're also during FY18, we increased up snow and ice. So hopefully that will take the pinch off uh, Reliance to do year-end reserve accounts to make that or to wash out those deficits during the year. So it's part of an overall plan. So not only will it address maybe this position but some other similar situations that may arise during the course of the year. Just through the chair, and this is off of the Warren article, but and I, I don't know where we stand. Uh, obviously, we're not the committee that negotiates with division, you know, uh, department heads and whatnot. But you know, if we ever have any input as to um, those scales and recommendations as as they get to those points, I mean, we are extraordinarily fortunate uh, being the new, one of the new guys here. I mean, the materials that are presented to us and the you know articulateness of uh, the department heads and explaining things in preparation, uh, we're so fortunate to lose some of these folks. And you know, I look at some of the salaries and we look at the you know their annual operating budgets, and it's uh, they're just not there. And I don't know where they compare, uh, but I would love to be able to uh, you know see where they compare to their you know similar sized communities and their private uh, counterparts and be able to have some say so that yeah we would support in in budget discussions mm -hmm. increases uh, that would reflect folks and retain people within the community including the folks we have seated here before us so. 
That would be uh, that would be great, and we appreciate it. We I, I did a study uh, two years ago. Actually, when we go back, uh, we had hired a consultant maybe six years ago to do a study, and using that um, the database and the program that was set up, we then redid it on our own without the consultant two years ago, and we looked at 15 communities and used all the numbers and created all the matrix, and we did um, average salary, median salary, mean salary, and we did it for every single position and then we did come back to the Finance Committee mm -hmm. with recommendations for adjustments based on those comps. And we tiered it so those that were more than 90, per, uh, excuse me, in the 70% range uh, of what was the mean or median, um, we made adjustments to those. Then the next fiscal year, one fiscal year later, we came back and we made adjustments to the next tier that we were in the 80%. And we're actually, this coming budget year, looking at a couple more to make adjustments. So we're using that to slowly phase it because there were there were some enormous deltas uh, that's just we, we can't have that again and you make a great point it's not just getting people here it's once you have them here and you put all our our efforts into it <coughs> they're trained and they're ready and they know what they're doing and then if another community steals them away because they're offering more I think That's uh, difficult. Mr. Cole and I both had the same reaction when we had the new library director before us, and she was talking about the qualifications of her staff that, you know, requiring a master's degree in library science, and I really thought there was a typo on the, uh, on the salaries. I, I was, I, you know, how do you pay your, your, your ed? Your student loans, and if you have any master's degree in, in right. making that for a salary, yeah. so. so we have. We I think we've made great progress in, in those positions, but we're not we're not finally there yet. Um, but we did make a lot of progress over the last couple of years. We're still using that study from two years ago. as a it was a 15 study? Um, you know, so those numbers do change a little. But just to be consistent, we wanted to still use that because that's how we made the adjustments in 15. So we didn't want to go back and get another one. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, we'll probably do it again in two years. I, th I think we need to do that every five years at a minimum uh, because if we start slipping behind and what we are finding is a lot of times we have supervisors who aren't making as much as their employees because the employees may be in union contracts and they were getting maybe steps on top of on top of Kohler's and pretty soon they're making more than their immediate supervisor and you, you just can't have that. So I, we really appreciate all your support. We'll continue to do that. We'll happy to show you all the numbers, um, show you what the comps are. It, it's a really large chart, but um, it, it is helpful. And mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's an eye-opener. Any other uh, questions on specifics on Article 2? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Thank you. Um, next article. Three, four, six, seven, nine, ten. Sixteen, maybe? Eighteen. Well said. Sixteen? Sixteen. I think I had sixteen. Uh, see if town meeting, this, this is, I guess, the free cash article, sixteen and seventeen. See if town meeting will vote to appropriate $350,000 from free cash to the stabilization fund. Uh, obviously, we've sort of backed into this number. The next article is is an OPEB appropriation on this. Uh, any comments? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Great. Thanks. And Article 17, see if town meeting will vote to appropriate $175,000 from free cash to the uh, OPEB trust fund. Comments? Questions? Comments. Uh, I still think we shouldn't be putting more money into that account. We should use it for some um, capital items now. So we have to either borrow less for capital items or raise you know, uh, raise less money. Just my comment on that. Any other? I didn't oh, hear. In. What did you say? Yeah. I don't think we should be putting the town should be putting money into additional money into the OPEB. I think we put in a pretty substantial amount. Um, and we should use the this money to um, yeah. um, pay for capital items, so the money doesn't have to be raised or um, or borrowed. I, I, I think I, I think you raise a, a good point there, and quite honestly, capital expenses is a qualifying in a good item as well. 
I think from a town administration point of view, when we look at the priorities, OPEB is probably at the top of the list. And I know we've had this discussion before, uh, but certainly when you look at it from a liability perspective, uh, it makes a lot of sense to at least fund as much as we can to address that long-term liability. It helps us out with the rating agencies, quite honestly. Um, I can tell you we're not even close to funding what, I, what our annual required contribution should be based upon that liability. It's upwards of about 2.3 million. I think our annual contribution, I think last time I did a calculation, based upon the last actuarial study was about 19% of what we should be funding it. Granted, we don't have the ability to fund our annual required contribution, but we want to get as close as we can. We're doing this in times of opportunity. I'm glad we built in $500,000 annually to address that on a long-term basis, but I think we made a commitment to at least funding more than that $500,000 when we can. This offers us an opportunity to do that, and I'm, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, th I think it goes a long way with the rating agencies, which will result in maybe a potential future upgrade that translates into additional savings as well. Any other comments on this? Um, conceptually, I, I, I agree with Ann on this. Um, to me, it's like, well, why don't we put that 175 into stabilization? That gives us the flexibility to, in this case, change our minds if we wanted to next year and say, you know what, stabilization, we get $6 million in there. Let's actually go back and throw something at OPEB at that point in time. We can do that, correct? We can do that. I can tell you that a lot of communities now are committing to taking a portion of their annual free cash and putting it into OPEB. That's how they're funding the OPEP. I believe Worcester's policy requires 50% of their free cash goes into OPEP every year. I think there was an attempt to do that by a motion of the board to carve out a restricted amount of free cash to go into OPEP. Ultimately, it came back to you, you weren't comfortable with that. And we're comfortable with the end result anyway, knowing that it was going to be town administration's recommendation for the utilization of that 50% of free cash based on a priority <laughs> basis. Okay. Any other it may be different if there was a, a capital need uh, that we needed to address. Maybe it, the recommendation would have been different, but this year the recommendation is, is into OPEP. Kevin? Where's our rating right now and potentially what, what, what improvements do we have left to be made in our ratings? So I can tell you that um, our rating with Moody's is an A2. Um, to get to a AAA, it requires a, a upgrade of two. Standard and Poor's, we have one shy of a, of a perfect rating. Um, standard and pause, quite honestly, we were hoping for a positive outlook that would allow us to maybe get to that perfect rating. We're not there quite yet because they'd like to see our reserves a little higher than what they are right now. And demographics? Uh, our demographics are hurting us more with Moody's, our, our wealth factors that we really don't have control over at this point. I mean, maybe through a housing plan or whatever, we can address that or make some, some advanced progress in the future. Um, but that's hampering us right now in, in terms of Moody's rating. I worked an overtime shift today, but I don't know if that's really gonna. <laughs> uh, one final question for me. Uh, it's To me, it's almost unfortunate that Article 17 is after Article 16, um, if town meeting votes not to recommend this amount or any amount to OPEB, is there an ability for town meeting to reopen Article 16 and put Yes, the they the could. You okay. would have Just to come from a motion from the floor. Okay. And once again, we've been kind of reticent on this board to committing extra to OPEB. But as I remember, we basically were relying on town administrations best thoughts on how to move these monies where 
Eddie and Julie thinks they should be going. So we, mm -hmm. we should keep that in mind. That, that was part of our concern of not committing a dollar amount like the Board of Selectmen wanted. And if I could just reiterate, too, sure. this isn't going to be an annual recommendation. Sure. It, it's just we looked at other other needs, and we didn't. We were meeting our other needs this year. We were able to take care of them. Mm -hmm. um, that's not necessarily always going to be the case, and we've all seen that that's not always the case. So this would be something that we absolutely would not recommend if we had a capital need that we could address that was blatantly out there and we we don't want to borrow again when that goes to our our policy about putting aside money on an annual basis um, into an account to try to curb that borrowing and, mm -hmm. and that's we've been doing very well on that end too the one tenth of, of the mm -hmm. two and a half so that's helping as well because quite honestly it, it, we had the opportunity to do this through general taxation if we wanted to and decided not to we did it through free cash because it qualifies as one of its uses. This budget that's going to the fall town meeting gets us to 125 and not over 125. So when we're taxing half of what we're allowed to tax. So we're cognizant that we're trying to hold the line. Um, so, and even when we went to the annual town meeting, we were just shy of 1%. So this gets us up to 125. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're holding the line on uh, Prop 2.5. Um, we just saw this as an opportunity, given our level of free cash, to put a sum of money in at this time. Okay. We have a motion on this? Motion recommend. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. I'm in favor. One, two, three. Opposed? Opposed, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank four you. to one. Okay. Good discussion. Article 18, see if town meeting will vote to supplement each prior vote of the... No. Eddie, what's Article 18? Please. Um, so, let me get a summary. So, Article 18, there was an IGR, it's an informational guideline released by the Department of Revenue that requires a treatment of bond premiums on the seal of bonds. The premiums used to be recorded against the general fund, or if it's raised to a debt exclusion, it had to be set aside into a reserve account and paid down on uh, the debt and interest of that purpose. Um, DOR said you can no longer take those premiums in as general fund revenue. They're allowed to be set up into a reserve account, a special reserve account that be can be used for the purposes of purchasing capital. Um, under which the original authorization was approved. So for instance, we have a 10 year purpose that we received a premium on a bond sale. Those premiums are set aside into account for other capital items that qualify under a 10 year purpose as well. This vote retroactively goes back to any authorizations that are approved by town meeting. You have to retroactively go back and apply this new IGR ruling. Um, so if something was authorized and not borrowed, and then we go out and borrow six months from now, any premiums on those prior bond issues, uh, those authorizations have to go, those premiums have to go into the reserve account as well. Uh, this language will also become... This is a good thing. This is a good thing. This language will also become standard language for any borrowing article in the future. The only difference with this this reserve account, it requires, the capital purchases normally require a two-thirds vote. This requires a majority vote. Mm -hmm. What else do for the town? So this latest bond issue, a net premium after issuance cost was a little over 200000 $200,000 is going to go into this account, and I should have brought this up. This is one of the reasons why we're... Uh, recommending OPEP because now this two hundred thousand dollars is available for future capital needs as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a good offset, I guess. We have a motion to recommend. Second. Any other comments on this? Great. All of, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thanks. Uh, even more importantly, I know you can very briefly summarize 19. I believe from what you told me, basically we don't have to approve all the revolving accounts at annual town meeting. Right. It only applies to Chapter 44, 53 and a half revolving accounts, and they're identified, 17 of them are identified in the matrix in the warrant. These revolving accounts, 
at one point were approved by town meeting and renewed every year, I believe under Article 9. Those renewals no longer have to go to town meeting because they're gonna become part of the general bylaw. Um, so this, this establishes the bylaw. It gets baked into the bylaw. Any new revolving account that is um, proposed is gonna require an amendment to this bylaw. I don't like any time we had a stop sign. No, I'll leave that alone. It's getting late. Any questions? This also is required by DOR. This was supposed to be in effect this year. I, the uh, IGR ruling came out in, the spring, in November of 16, and communities didn't have enough time to pull their bylaws together in order to bring it to the annual, so they extended it by one year. So this goes into effect FY19. Okay. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, so voted. Thank you. Thanks for summarizing it. Um, next one, I guess, is 24, which is related to the uh, billboards at the mall. I believe, Julie, I'm going to say you, administration has gone to great lengths to answer a lot of the questions that came out of town meeting four, which there were a lot of, uh, this all comes from it. I believe last night, planning board, did they approve this? They did, they approved they did. it unanimously. Um, and if, if I can just say this, sure. um, the, the bylaw amendment that you have before you tonight and that will go to the town meeting is much more restrictive than the one that this board supported uh, previously. And it, I believe you were all here when that happened. The reason was, there is a donation that is tied into this, and I just want to be clear that the donation is a voluntary donation. We would not have even looked at accepting a donation if it had a negative impact on the town. It doesn't matter how much someone wants to give the town. If it has a negative impact, we're not going to support that. Mm -hmm. The fact is, this we believe this didn't have a negative impact. The Board of Selectmen, for this revised uh, bylaw, unanimously supported it. Uh, the planning board last night unanimously supported okay. it. Okay. And the donation is still on the table, but I would tell the board that the other monetary component to this for the town is just the viability of the mall and, and their valuations. So the valuations are set by the income approach to value. So the more they bring in in revenues, the more we can assess their property. So it has a direct impact on taxes. I, I wouldn't try to tell you that they're going to close if they don't get their billboards, because I don't think they're going to say that either, that they're not going to close if they don't get their billboards. But the reality is every mall across the entire country has to look at non-retail revenue sources mm -hmm. to try to offset those retails, because those retail revenues while they're doing very well down there we all know there things are happening in the retail world it's an e-trade world e-trade commerce and um, it, it's going to have an impact so this will help them generate a different type of revenue that will help them it will help us because it will help us to assess them at, um, based on those revenues that they bring in and on top of it there would be still on, on the table the million dollar donation with two hundred fifty thousand dollars payable up front the other uh, remaining fifty thousand dollars a year for f the remaining fifteen years um, unrestricted donation so it remains um, open for discussion as to what we could do with that donation our, our recommendation would be at least to use the initial donation to help implement some of the Drury Square strategies because that is going to, in turn, make the area more attractive, make it more business friendly, and hopefully fill up some of the vacant properties, bring in more businesses, and increase the tax revenue. So if that money can be used to generate some additional revenue. So that was why it had come to the Finance C Committee previously, because it did have a financial component. And I would say, again, hopefully you support it. It's This is even stronger. We listened to town meeting. They had some great concerns, some great ideas, um, and it's been incorporated into this. And I believe that this is a stronger, better, I, I thought it was very good in May, but now it's even better mm -hmm. um, because we did address some of the concerns of town meeting members. Okay. We're also having a meeting tomorrow night for, we invited all the town meeting members, but finance committee members, you know, please come if you'd like to see it. We're going to present to any town meeting member who wants pre-information, so we, hopefully we're trying to give them the information ahead of time so we won't take up the entire night talking about this at town meeting. 
Um, so tomorrow night we're going to present what the new amendment is. The, there's going to be a sample of the a demonstration of the billboard itself. It's a four by eight foot on a trailer that we're going to put right outside the high school. And they're going to give a demonstration of what it is and, and more importantly what it's not and how it doesn't have ambient lighting problems and it doesn't have uh, what you call light pollution. It's a new technology where you really, the light isn't going to affect anyone. So that meeting's at 7 tomorrow night at the high school. Um, again, it was for town meeting members because they will be voting on this, but you're certainly um, invited to come. Okay. Kevin? <clears throat> um, I, I supported this last time you came before us. I supported it from an economic development perspective. But I can't help get, and I was going to voice my concerns when, when projects are tied to donations. And I know you've done everything above and all the ethics. But I, I'd always get that concern. And it's with other projects that you see too, where it's we're going to put in this development and we're going to ask you to repave, you know, 10 miles of road up, up the street because one car might go that way. It's, it always kind of has a little bit of a, a concern. I'm just going to say it's a concern. So, um, well, I would say that regardless of whether they offered a donation, this is this is something we should be supporting, even if there was no donation. I agree. This, this is an economic development tool for them all, and what helps them all helps the town. Um, they're our number one taxpayer. They're our number one employer, and the second highest taxpayer only pays 30% of the total amount that the mall pays us. So um, it, it is a, a financial impact on that. Um, it did come up at a board of selectmen meeting. One of the board members had recommended that they wanted us to negotiate for a higher or more uh, financial donation, and we made it clear this is not tied to that, that you have to keep them separate. This this is not an impact fee. We're not charging that. This was a voluntary donation we never asked. We said that until we knew that we even liked what the bylaw amendment was, we weren't even going to talk about a donation. So, and, and we, all of it was run by town council. So. And again, I agree with the, the way you've sort of earmarked the money towards improvements in Jury Square and everything about it, but I always, you know, there's always that concern when a little bit extra is putting in to sweeten the pot, especially when it comes to um, changes, so, uh, or, or any, any projects and developments. That, that's all. Yeah. I, I think Julie already an, um, brought this point up or answered it, but in the example you used, the town was soliciting maybe a donation. That's not at all what's happening no, no, no. here. I, I understand. Okay. I so, yeah, no, we need solicit. I, I understand, yeah. but uh, I, I, mm -hmm. yeah. We, we don't solicit any mm -hmm. uh, donations for anything. Uh, we do get a lot of donations from the business community, and again, that's why we don't solicit, because you can't have that quid pro quo uh, concern. But we do get some of our, our local employers give us money toward our concert series. They sponsor the Independence Day. We're, it's not an exchange for it. It's, it's what they're doing to help the community. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so once again, hopefully this gets back to more of a discussion, not of a uh, let's see, 100 feet up, 85 feet up, it's more a matter of, hey, look, this will help our biggest employer in mm -hmm. town and probably several other employers in town that will be able to utilize this billboard for their own advertising and that kind of thing on it. Right. So. And I think, you know, it does address some of the aesthetic concerns. I think just seeing the sample and seeing a demonstration of what it looks like is going to make a big difference. Um, where is this one in size relative to the one that we already have in town that already faces the turnpike headed east? So there? that one is a 20 by 60 foot face, and this is a 14 by 48. So that one's more than double the square footage on the face. Um, I believe this, there's a sign down um, off of South, I think it's 26 Southwood Street is the address, and that one was a... Um, 4,135 square feet, which I had to assume included ground to top because that's enormous. Um, so it's it's smaller than the face of it is smaller, but recognizing there are four, you know, it's two-sided, so one one side with the other side being the same, and then there are two of them. So it's smaller than what you see. The tech, the difference in the technology is it's almost like looking at a, a cell phone from a certain angle, from a 30 degree angle, so from this angle right here, mm -hmm. unless you're in this triangle right there, you don't see anything but black. So the only ones who'll see that would be vehicles on the pike when they hit that kind of sweet spot, 30% um, off center. 
um, and then it's just it's it's pretty much black. Uh, some town meeting members had to express concern. Well, well, we're only seeing pictures of this during the day. What, what's it going to look at at night? It's going to be bright, and we have pictures of it at night. And at night, it doesn't completely disappear, but it's not bright like what you think. It's actually less bright than most of the signs that are already out there. Any other questions? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or voted. Thank you. Thank you. I think our last article is uh, oh. 25. So Perhaps. this one is actually, uh, I can just explain this. So uh, Robert Post had contacted me and sent a letter that he would like to donate three parcels of land, uh, 159, 160, and 161 uh, South Hall Road. If you recall, back in 2014, the town received notification for 61A purchase and sales agreement, and under Chapter 61A, towns have the right of first refusal, and the Board of Selectmen um, exercise their right of first refusal to purchase the land. Within that purchase and sales agreement were three non-61A classified parcels that at the time uh, the town determined and was upheld by town council that we didn't have any authority to include that in the sale. They were not 61A parcels. They were not uh, exempt. Therefore, they didn't fall under the, the legislation, and we had no legal authority to buy it under that circumstance. So these are those three parcels that were in the initial purchase and sale. So 160 South Hold Road is landlocked uh, by accepting the donation. It's it's abuts the property, the 61A property that we had on the north side of, of South Hold Road. So it would no longer be landlocked. The um, parcels at 159, excuse me, 159, 161 are on the south side of South Hold Road, and those are uh, abutting one another, and they're also contiguous to the 61A land. Um, the total value of these three is approximately $174,000 of assessed valuation, so the taxes are about $3,100 a year. So by accepting this donation, the town is losing the $3,100 a year. Um, however, that being said, they're gaining uh, almost the, the whole of the donut. You know, the, the parcels we bought go around these, so you're, you're creating an, a, a better parcel for future development, uh, whether that future development is for municipal use, wh whatever the town decides down the road to do, it won't have these carved out in the middle of it. Um, and these are unrestricted donations. So it's not on here because it wasn't, by the time we turned it in, it wasn't there, but the Board of Selectmen took a vote Monday night to have this article supported by both the Board of Selectmen, sponsored by the Board of Selectmen and the town manager. So when you see it, it will be sponsored by both of us. Okay. I like to think of it as our cost per acre for purchasing that, purchasing that very expensive land just went down just a little mm -hmm. bit. And that's about <clears throat> it. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So we'll have thanks. I think that's all the articles. Thank that's you very something. much. So, Julie, thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Eddie, thank obviously, you. always thank you. We've got uh, minutes. For March 1st and March 8th, 2017, any questions or issues on those? Okay, that's great. So we won't have to meet before town meeting, which is uh, the 24th of October. So, and I believe that starts at 7 o'clock. So if you can make that, that would be great. Uh, absence of any other comments or questions, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so moved. Thanks. Have a good night.